What is up guys, Marcel Williams, aka The Swole Faster, here to educate you on health, fitness, social well-being. On screen, you guys are going to be seeing training footage from this past week, Tuesday through Thursday. And while that's playing, I want to talk to you guys about hard gainers in the sense of what it really means to be a hard gainer, as well as giving you guys some practical advice about how to work around it. I'm aware that the summertime is coming up and a lot of you are probably going to be focused on cutting, but which a lot of you are probably going to realize by the time you're done cutting is that you probably didn't build quite as much muscle mass as what you thought you did in your off season. A lot of it is because a lot of you didn't spend a whole lot of time in a surplus and for a lot of you you really weren't maybe weren't in like the best surplus you could be because it's hard for you to eat the amount that you need to actually be in a steady surplus so if that's the case this video is for you so the first thing that i want to address guys is what it actually means to be a hard gainer now a lot of people assume that being a hard gainer simply means that you have to eat a certain amount of calories to gain weight like oh you have to eat 4,000 calories a day to gain weight oh you must be a hard gainer which simply isn't the case because there's a lot of people where maybe that's the amount of calories they have to eat to gain weight but that's easy for them because they have really big appetites right so when we're talking about a hard gainer we're basically talking about somebody where it is hard for them to eat the amount of food they need however many calories that may be in order to maintain and put on weight that's what we're talking about when it comes to hard gainers so the first thing i want to address guys is the misconception that you are a hard gainer because you just have a very very fast metabolism the fact of the matter guys is that's usually not the case it's not to say that genetically speaking there aren't variances between people's metabolisms some people do have a slightly faster metabolism than other but that's usually not the reason that some person that one person's having to eat like you know 2,000 more calories than somebody else or that's usually not the reason why somebody can't eat quite enough um to actually gain weight. The reality is other lifestyle factors have way more to do with that. The first one being guys is you maybe you're just extremely physically active, meaning that you either have a very physically demanding job as far as like manual labor, or maybe you play a sport, whether it's basketball, football, you run track, whatever you do in addition to your weight training, or maybe you're somebody who just have a very active lifestyle in general. You like to go hiking, you like to go for walks, you walk your dog a lot. Um, you like to go on trips where you're just doing a bunch of physical endeavors, things like that. And if that's you, then in general, you may end up finding that you burn way more calories than what you're taking in. And even though you're eating enough to feel full, you're not actually eating enough to gain the weight that you want because of how physically active you are. The other reason that you may be a hard gainer has to do with the hormones leptin and ghrelin, which I've talked to you guys about on this channel before. Um, in a quick nutshell, without going over all the same details again from past videos, um, we're talking about leptin, we're referring to the hormone that has a lot to do with suppressing our appetite. And we're talking about ghrelin, that's the hormone that has to do with increasing our appetite and how these two hormones work together as far as energy balance obviously has a lot to do with, you know, the fact that some people have bigger appetites than others. And that, and because of this reason, guys, it really comes down to the fact that there's not a whole lot you can do about it, right? It's like those are hormones inside your body that you don't necessarily have a whole lot of control of. And then for those of you who have very physically active lifestyles, yeah, you could stop playing whatever sport you're doing. You could quit your job and go to a more sedentary job. You could just stop taking all those fun trips you enjoy where you go hike and stuff like that. But the vast majority of you, that's not going to be realistic. And that's not something that I would express to you to do anyway, just because it isn't necessary. So let's get let's get into the practical advice that's going to help you guys in terms of your weight goal. So the first thing guys is going to be make sure that you're actually accurately tracking your calories when you're in a surplus. I've talked about this time and time again, guys, but you have to start treating your bulks just as seriously, if not more seriously than when you're cutting. Because once again, yes, when you cut, that's when you want to make sure that you're, you know, on point of your deficit. So that way you can show what all you built. But when you're in the surplus is when you're actually taking the time to build. That's when you're building everything that you want to show off at the end of your cut during the summer or during whatever, you know, physique show you may or may not have, right? So we need to make sure that we're actually maximizing our surplus by ensuring that we're watching the scale, make sure that that scale, the weight on the scale is going up gradually, making sure that we have an, uh, we have an actual idea of how many calories we're taking in, what our macro, macro breakdown for those calories are. So that way we can increase those calories as needed whenever we hit stalls and, um, and our weight gain. A lot of you, you may not even have one of the first two issues where you're just really hyperactive or you have a low appetite. Maybe you're not that active and maybe your appetite's perfectly fine, but you're just not eating enough because you actually have no idea of how much you're eating. You assume you're eating enough because you look at your food and like, oh, I'm eating a little bit more than usual, but it may not be enough to actually gain weight. So the first piece of advice is to actually track your calories as accurately as possible while you're in a surplus. The second tip, guys, is going to be, uh, has to do with your macro breakdown. And that's the fact that fats are your friends for those of you who are hard gainers. It's simple as this, guys. 
for carbs. A lot of you, that's what you try to do when you're trying to go into a surplus. You try to eat as many carbs as you can, but keep this in mind. There is only four calories per one gram of carb, but there's nine calories per one gram of fat. So rather than only trying to be in a surplus by boosting your carbs from whatever your maintenance level is, I suggest boosting your carbs as well as your fats. Now, how much of your fats that you boost is going to vary from person to person, but what it comes down to is that you're going to be able to get way more total calories in that way than if you just try to get all of your calorie, additional calories in from carbs because the amount of volume you have to eat as far as food, if you eat, let's say, an additional 500 calories of carbs, it's going to be way more than if you only have to eat, you know, 500 calories of fat and carbs, or even if you just went and you just decide to, oh, I'm going to get my extra 500 calories from fats alone. It's just going to be a lot easier because you're not going to have to eat quite as much food. It's not to say that you shouldn't care about what source those fats come from. It's not to say that you don't need to be on top of your micronutrition as well. But for those of you who are hard gainers, if you know that just getting more food in you in general is difficult, then eating more fats is going to be helpful for you because it's going to let you get closer to that caloric surplus without having to eat quite as much food. The next tip that I'm gonna be giving you guys is to simply drink more of your calories. If it's hard to get food in, that's where you're gonna start making smoothies, that's where you're gonna start making shakes. Don't just drink water with every meal all the time. Get some milk in there, drink some juice. Even having a soda every now and then is gonna be beneficial to you because you're just getting overall more calories in it. That's what you're really gonna need um, when it comes to trying to be in a surplus. It's just a lot easier to drink your calories than to try to eat like, let's say, 4,000 calories a day. I myself tend to sometimes drink anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 of my calories from a smoothie just because it's so much easier to get in. Now, the next piece of advice I'm going to give you guys actually has a lot to do with meal timing and not meal timing in the sense of this is going to have a drastic effect on your body composition because we know that in the, the day it's ultimately about like, you know, that macro distribution and the total calories that you're eating. But Meal timing in the sense of take advantage of your appetite when it's at its highest. For those of you where you have low appetites, you're going to have during, um, certain um, times of the day or even certain days as a whole where you're hungrier than others. And that's when you need to really be trying to eat more in order to make up for the times when you're not as hungry. Using myself for an example, once again, I know that on Saturdays, I simply don't eat as much. I'll usually eat like three big meals a day to reach my calories. But on Saturdays, after a long SBE session, which is anywhere from like, you know, um, four to five hours. I'm usually not hungry for the first couple hours after that. And then it's after that when I finally have my first meal of the day. So on Saturdays, I'll usually have one big meal and then like a smaller meal later that day or like a snack after that big meal. So because of that, I make sure that I eat an extra amount on Fridays when I'm actually very hungry because it's going to allow me to make up for the, the calories that I'm missing out on Saturdays. And it's the same thing just on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're somebody where you know you just don't eat that much during breakfast, even though yes, try to get something in, whether it's a small shake or a smoothie or just a smaller breakfast, that's fine. But Make sure you really maximize the amount that you're eating later in the day when you do tend to be hungrier, whether it's around lunchtime, dinner time, whatever it may be. And then something as simple as even getting more snacks in for those of you where you just know that you don't eat as big of meals, getting those snack ins throughout the day is going to help you so, so much because those snacks start to add up, right? Like if you have a little snack between each meal, that could be anywhere from an additional five to a thousand calories throughout that day, depending on what you're eating. So these things are going to help you in the long run with just getting more calories in. But in order to do this, notice you have to actually pay attention to your body. You have to actually pay attention to your eating habits. And that's what I'm talking about when I say you have to start taking your bulks just as seriously as your cuts. And a lot of you have to stop getting so focused on the way that like your friends are eating or the way that these other YouTubers are eating. That's why I'm opposed to doing the whole like full day of eating thing or why I don't even tell you guys what my specific calories and macros are that often unless I have an actual specific reason to from an informative standpoint because it doesn't do anything for you all. Like knowing what I'm eating isn't gonna help you. Even if we're the same height and the same weight, it doesn't matter. Like even if you're five foot seven walking in the 160s like I am, it doesn't mean we're gonna have the same caloric expenditure. In fact, I would even say that most of you probably don't have to eat as much as what I do in order to maintain or gain any type of weight just because maybe you're not as physically active outside the gym as what I am. Maybe your energy turnover rate isn't as high because that's another thing is you start to get strong over time and build more muscle mass over time even though yes we're not burning that many calories necessarily with weight training alone. The amount of calories that we just burn as a whole because of how our bodies work is we gain more lean mass as we get stronger that's going to increase. That's going to increase the total amount that you can eat instead of maintenance and therefore it's going to increase the total amount of uh, calories that you have to eat in order to gain weight as well. So rather than wasting your time comparing yourself to me or to other YouTubers, even to your friend and whining about like, oh, well, you know, he can put on weight so easily. You got to figure out what the numbers are for you and then go from there. Because at the end of the day, 
It doesn't matter what the next person's doing. In order for you to put on weight, you gotta figure out, okay, how many calories do I need to be, to be in, in order to be in a surplus? And what's the most efficient way for me to go about hitting those calories? So if you apply these tips, guys, then it's going to help you out a lot. It's not enough to just know what the numbers are. It's not enough to just whine about like, oh, it's just so hard to get the food in. If you want to be in a surplus and you wanna maximize muscle growth, you gotta find a way to get it in. I know it's tough because I'm a hard gainer. Like for the longest time, it was very hard for me to figure out ways to get in the amount of food that I needed to. But using a lot of these methods, it's, it's how I've done it, guys. It's the reason that I'm able to maintain my weight and when I need to actually like be in a decent surplus in the off season, I'm finally able to do it. It's because I've taken the time to learn my body, um, to learn what works for me as far as my macro breakdown, as far as like, you know, eating more fast as this, instead of trying to force me to a whole bunch of carbs and learning when my appetite is gonna be high as well as when my appetite is going to be low. So if you take all these pieces of advice that I've given you guys and start applying it to yourself, I guarantee you it's gonna make a difference. It's gonna make your lean mass phases a whole lot easier and a whole lot more productive. So that way when you do cut, you actually have something good to show for it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch you guys later.